Hi everyone, this is Yvette. Welcome back to my art studio and thank you so much for coming today. We are going to be painting a watercolor painting. Today is going to be this uh, Easter little eggs and is, I'm going to be using as well some salt in the background. Thank you so much and let's dive in. So I'm going to be sharing with you uh, how I trace these little eggs doing freehand. I'm going to be sharing with you how I did this background with salt, it's table salt, and I'm going to be sharing my color palette and my brushes as well. Okay, so what I did first is, and I have these leftovers of uh, watercolor paper, I trace an egg and then I cut it to have the same size always. So this time it will be a horizontal painting. With the help of your template, trace the five eggs in different positions. Don't forget to draw the thread. Now, I will draw with a soft line the image inside of each egg. I will start by drawing the butterfly. Now I will draw the tulips.
The nest does not need so much detail in pencil. The most important part are the little two eggs that are inside the nest. This is a translucent flower. And the last one is going to be a small bird house.
Now I'm going to be using my kneaded eraser to smooth the lines. I will start by painting with the Naples yellow and the burnt amber the bottom of the eggs to give it some volume. And for that I'm going to be using my first brush, it's going to be a round, round number 6. And the paint, let me just move my cable, is going to be a yellowish. Can we go here? This is a yellowish, it's Naples yellow. I'm going to add it here, just a little tiny bit. I'm going to put aside. And this is what we're going to do. We are going to use a clean water and I'm going to be waiting inside the egg. With the tip of my brush, adding some of this yellow and I'm going to go and paint around like this. Then I'm going to wet my brush and I'm going to grab a little bit of my burnt amber, just a little bit with water. I'm going to add a little touches in the bottom like this.
Okay, I'm back and what we're going to do now, we're going to start painting. First is going to be the butterfly. For the butterfly, we are going to be using our regular yellow, that is our cadmium yellow. Then we're going to be using some red. I have here my naphtol red. And maybe a little bit of our orange that I have here, this orange as well. That is a cadmium yellow orange that I have here in this corner, okay? So these are the three colors that we're going to be using, plus of course the black that is going to be actual paints, paints gray for the little body, okay? So for that, we are going to still using the same brush that is going to be my number six round. And what I'm going to do is prepare my colors. So I'm going to grab a little bit of this yellow and add a little bit here. And I'm going to use some of water. I have this little bottle of water, so I'm spraying some of the color. So what I'm going to do first, I'm going to wet the big, the large, uh, the biggest wind with clean water. And first, I'm going to be adding my yellow with a, with water because you want to have a transparent color, okay? So on the bottom, and I have here my paper. Then I wanna grab a little bit of this orange. And then the red, I have here my red. But this time I'm going to start in the top of the wing. I'm going to clean my brush like this. And I'm going to move the red. Let's grab a little bit more of the red. I'm going to go in the line. I'm going to clean my brush. I'm going to make some like foldings just like this dragging the red inside okay so now we need to dry it and I think I'm going to be using my hair dryer without not muting it because we don't want to have like accident that I forget then to unmute so sorry so much for the noise okay is better right so let's do uh, the second wind that is this is already dry so I'm going to be sure that first my brush is clean then use clean water going to add again a little bit of the yellow in the bottom. I'm going to move it. And grab a little bit of my orange. Clean my brush and now a little bit of my red. So watercolor is about uh, transparent tones and we're trying to work really the colors very, very soft and gentle. And I'm going to drag the red like this. I'm going to clean my brush and just blend the colors, see, soft and gentle. Now, the next win. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, Jill. And we're going to wet 
the third wing like this grab some yellow clean and then some orange I'm just moving the orange. I want to have uh, two different colors here because I want to be able to see the difference between this wing and this one. Okay, so now some of the red, the outline. With my brush, and I'm going to drag the red. We can come back later and add more color if we decide uh, that it is very like light. So while we're waiting this one to get dry, we can start painting the tulips. Okay, so for the tulips, we're going to have purple. I have here my purple with water. Then we're going to have some of the orange that we have here with some of the yellow that we have here and some pink so let me bring the pink we're going to be using this opera rose I'm going to add some pink here I want to use this prince and town and it's not number zero okay so we're going to start first by wetting the purple one so I'm going to wet the whole flower and now I'm going to grab a little bit of my purple that is super light and I'm going to add it in the middle let me grab more purple in the middle then what I'm going to do is to clean my my, my brush and I'm going to just like moving into the bottom to have very light purple then I'm going to go back with my purple I load more thick the paint and I'm going to just go and add these strokes clean my brush and blend this part of the petals is thicker So now I'm going to be painting the orange. So let me show you. This orange with yellow. Okay. First I'm going to clean my brush. And I'm going to wet the flower. First I'm going to grab my yellow and it's going to be in the bottom going to clean the excess of the paint then I'm going to grab a little bit of my orange let me do a zoom out but because the camera is like uh, doing in and out in and out and with my orange I'm going to tap first in the tip with the tip of my brush now I'm going to clean and I'm going to drag the paint 
like this okay so then I'm going to clean my brush and the next one is going to be the pink one this one again let's wet it and I have here my pink so the pattern need to be soft And then the top need to be like darker pink. I'm going to clean my brush. I'm going to move a little bit to the bottom, dragging the paint to the bottom. Just simple, okay? So the next, I'm going to leave the the nest is going to be the last one to work so I'm going to start working this flower okay so for that I'm going to move for this I decide to go with a round number four and we are in the pink again okay so what we're going to do first is to prepare our pink and again be sure that your brush is clean always and let's prepare a bunch of light pink here because we're going to be using this pink all the time so that's why it's better to prepare as much as you think you're going to be in need and all depend how big is your painting that's why I don't need a lot okay so what I'm going to be doing now, I'm going to be painting this first petal. And I am moving like this because I'm giving time to the grass, uh, to the flowers to dry to keep working. So, but you guys can like paint one wait that it's dry and then go with another one and then go with another one okay okay so we use and now i'm going to be painting the two petals that are aside with the same color and as we're doing this glazing you're going to be able to see the two tones okay and I'm going to dry it so again same color same pink yeah welcome and now need to be dry this is very important that the pearls who are in the back are hundred percent dry load my brush again and I don't need to use some so much paint here you can see how the colors are darker where the pearls get overlap and that's the idea okay so now what we can do is to change for our thin brush that is the number zero to paint the steam for the steam I have here a hawker screen with water to make it transparent and I'm going to go very soft and gentle with the steam first and just be careful do not touch the petals and the leaf now the steel is wet I'm going to grab a little more thick paint and I'm going to go and add a little extra tone here here and in this part and in the tip 
and here is no moving I'm just wet my brush and just add a little water beside just to make it like more like easy going okay so the next one is going to, I'm going to start painting the little bird house okay we're ready so for that I'm going to still using my number zero round zero and I'm going to start first by adding the light light brown of the bottom of the birdhouse so I'm going to be painting everything except this little circle okay so for that I have here my burnt amber I'm going to add more water to make it very light color okay so I'm going to paint So let's go back and paint this green while we wait this to get dry we can come back here okay so clean my brush and I'm going to grab some of my hawker screen with water that are so delicate right that's what I love about this this picture because our, everything is so delicate so here Painting the grass, the leaves, these are the leaves, no grass. Again. Now that it's wet, I'm going to grab again more the same green and add it in the bottom and if you notice that the, your paper is dry don't worry add your water always the water need to be your friend when you're painting watercolor And into the tip, very thick, thin, like a very light, nice and thin stroke. So again, I can even paint. Let me just move it like this because I want you guys to see what I'm doing. I don't want to be covering myself. This, I want to have it another color. So that's why I'm leaving like that. And we can Start, while this is drying we can start painting our nest okay so the nest let me show you the original they are different it's the same brown plus I'm going to be using some of my um, poker rosier okay so but with a lot of water to make it transparent so but I, I want you to see the, there is like a this movement all the time and there are strokes but we're going to start from the lightest color until the darker color that is going to be almost black in this part and the last thing that we're going to be painting are the little eggs okay so let's start with 
my things number zero. I'm going to grab a little bit of their raw sienna, but really bit, like really, like nothing. I'm going to grab my brush and grab a little bit of the sienna. Some water. And I'm going to start adding some with the tip of my brush, some strokes with this color. We want to see some areas in white, so we're not going to be covering everything, okay? Okay. I'm going to wash my, my brush and now I'm going to get the brown but I want to have like a light brown first and something that is very important here guys before moving to the next color this needs to be dry because you want to see very clear your strokes so I'm going to be using my hair dry okay I'm back I'm loading my brush with a light, light brown that is my burnt amber with a lot of water. And I'm going to add some strokes. First, I'm going to turn the middle where everything is going to be darker. This is more like a solid color. That's why it's one solid color. And then I want to add some strokes. But these strokes need to be like Thin. and remember guys we don't want to cover all the background we want to see all the colors we want to see the white we want to see the rosina in all directions okay and while this is drying we can go back and add some texture to the little house so for that I'm going to be using my paints gray that I have here with a little bit of my amber raw amber to make this like dark brown so I'm adding some water because I want to paint the heart I'm going to use some water and I'm moving the paint okay with this same color I want to go on the bottom of the ceiling the root and I want to add some like soft lines like, like wood you know pieces of wood here so very soft lines with the same brown this shadow here and I'm going to finish here because here we have some leaves and flowers and some here okay I'm going to add some water to my brush and just add some color here and there so I'm going to grab a little bit of my raw amber with my brown so I'm mixing it because I want to introduce like another tone remember this is white 
so we just need to protect that color okay clean my brush I need to grab again the mix of my pinus gray with my umber, raw umber again to make this like a darker brown and I'm going to go and add a shadow inside the it's already dry a shadow here and thinner on the right side okay a shadow on the bottom again and here to leave it alone and let's go back to the nest so for the nest I'm going to be using the same dark brown and I'm going to start first in the center the bottom part of the nest water to this dark brown I want to have the same color but soft and again you can even start adding some branches outside the little nest with the tip of my brush and the direction is from like a clockwise but also add some branches in in another direction Do some crosses, X. This is drying. Let's finish this. So I'm going to wet my brush, clean my brush, and I want to bring now some of the cobalt green that I have here. Let me show you my cobalt green. This is a cobalt green that I had been using and uh, had been enjoying it. just to have different colors of leaves then again I'm going to grab my green viridian and I'm going to wet my brush and move this green go back with the viridian green wet your brush and add this color in the top water so this is dry with wet and it was, was dry with wet again so in the bottom even here in this part clean your brush and add with the tip of your brush just water we're just adding greens different greens okay so this is dry so let's keep moving with the same brush we're going to add more dark brown so i'm going to add more of my paints gray with the raw amber i'm sorry burnt amber to have this rich dark brown but this time I want to change my brush I want to have something thinner and for that I have this precious one 
that is uh, 18 slash 0 okay because I want to have a very thin thin lines so I wet my brush and I'm going to start adding some branches And these branches are going to be the last one that we're going to be using that's why we need to like paint just in this part because here we need to add more black so all directions some branches go out of the nest I can even see the still I see the some white some amber some Louisiana are so delicate that's why it's good if we take our time to paint these branches gray I'm going to add more dark color in this part because this is the bottom part of the nest so you want to have like dark color darker color In this part I'm not going to add the, the darker brown or pine gray because I want this egg to be like in another like in inside the nest. So now I'm going to grab a straight pine gray. screen with water to make it transparent because I want to add some leaves tiny leaves here and there and some green even some green in between the little branches like, like this little dots here and there okay so now what I'm going to be doing is the same paints gray we're going to wait this to get dry so we can play a little bit with the little 
house okay so with my light paints grade again I'm going to add some dots and I'm going to leave some space in between for the flowers okay Yes. I'm going to clean my brush and I want to grab a little bit of my purple and I'm going to add some dots in purple and it doesn't matter that it gets mixed with the green actually I like how it looks Going to grab like a straight more purple and add like a little touch here and there like this okay so let's go back let me just move here and finish the butterfly so for the body of the butterfly I'm going to go back and use my thin brush and my paints gray and I'm going to move a little bit the paper because I want to be able to do it correctly so sorry so first the bar the head and then the body movement sometimes we need to move our, our paper <laughs> to make better strokes right the antennas mm -hmm. so we have the body ready okay so for this I'm going to dry it just to be sure that is okay Okay, so for that I'm going to go back to my number zero. I'm going to clean my brush and I'm going to grab um, some of the Naples yellow that we have at the beginning with a little bit of the yellow, cadmium yellow. I'm going to be mixing these two yellow, yellowish. And I wanna paint this guy. So the bottom need to be like a darker, so clean your brush, then take out the excess of the water and paint, and just move the, the paint. Again, water. Okay. And I wanna grab a little bit of my raw sienna that we have here, just in the bottom. this like a tip of shadow here mm -hmm. and I'm going to turn it so now pink so I'm going to grab some of the pink that we have here water Okay. 
है तो सब क्यूट फ्राई बार बार है सो आई एम क्लीनिंग माय ब्रश What we're going to do is uh, we're going to wait this to get dry to add a little uh, the spots and while we're waiting that we can go back and grab more of our paint clay and just add like any extra dots here and there with this color. Close to the lips. Just to give another extra dimension. Here we made some leaves. Mm -hmm. And for the little house, it's little like the bird house again. Grab with the same tiny brush and add some dots with this green So with the same brush, I'm going to grab a little bit of my dark brown. I'm going to like add some shadows again here. Let me change my brush. I want to add more shadows here. darker tone in this part again the bottom everything I'm going to take out this and this will be see what we're missing okay let me just try this X to do the spots Okay, so what we're going to do is with my number zero and I want to have this brown more reddish with water I want to add some spots like irregular spots first with this color and then with the dark brown and I'm going to change much my brush for the tiny one and go with the brown burnt amber with water and I'm going to add some of these spots You can add it in brown or in black. Okay. And let's revisit the butterfly with the same brush. I'm going to grab some of the red. And I want to move a little bit my page. Let's 
do it the opposite way, this way. First I'm going to add the line, very thin line, because I want to drag the line with my zero. water here okay again and drag the color to be able to move the color. Now that I have this brush, I can even go back and add some extra, like you know, here and there, color that I feel I was missing. So I'm just using my water and my brush. Okay. So I think this part is ready, so what I'm going to be doing now, and here, like for instance in this, this flower, these petals, you can even add in, in between the colors another tone, I like the way it looks like this, okay? So what I'm going to be doing is the background, so just be sure that the tape, because as I have been using the hair dryer, the tape get... Um, separate from the paper so we need to be just sure and if you're not sure it's good to tape tape it again okay so I have here my salt and I have my my brush so what I'm going to be doing is the idea is to wet everything in the background and then add the salt and leave it like that okay so uh, let's prepare first the color. I'm going to just clean a little bit this part of my palette to prepare the color that we're going to be using. So in the original picture is blue. It has two type of blue, cerulean blue and ultramarine blue. Okay, that's what we're going to be looking for. So I have here my ultramarine blue. And I have here my cerulean blue as well. Let me add the palette. So for the background, as I was telling you before, I'm going to um, wet everything first. If you're here and you can let me know if you can see it, that would be awesome. I have here the salt. Okay, so I'm going to keep moving. I hope you guys are able to see it. So with my biggest brush, my round biggest brush that I have close to me, that is the number 12. I'm going to wet everything. So again, be sure that um, do not touch the egg, okay? Go around the egg. And for this, is for me it's important to have a good paper because I can, I, I know that the, the paper is going to stay wet. using a lot of water 
intentionally because by the time that I will be finished I need to be sure that the paper is wet in the first part and as the effect is with the blue I'm not worried for that ah thank you it's like I have a um, power went off and everything got disconnected so I'm glad you can see me thank you live <laughs> stream live videos are no live videos if if we don't have an issue right so I'm going around And also what I did in my original painting is that uh, when everything was dry and I and I cleaned the salt if I was missing some part very close to the egg I will go back and use uh, dry paper with wet to correct that area So that's why I told you this is start like getting dry. So that's why I need to be like doing faster. And another thing that you can be doing is at the beginning, before painting the eggs, you can use your white mask and um, mask the eggs and paint the background before painting the eggs. So I'm going to be adding my blue my cerubian blue with the tip of my brush I'm coming close to the eggs So don't worry about the color to be one solid color. So actually try to make it like a strong color, a strong blue. And here I am going to move a little bit my paper and add the two blues. Let me just move again my paper. I want to come close to the eggs. in the colors because this is the idea to have the two colors and the tape is not sticky so I'm sure the white frame is not going to be white but it's okay in art we have happy accidents So when you feel the color is ready, you have okay. 
here I just I want to go close okay so now it's time to use our our salt so grab some salt and apply it all around and this is better if you leave the salt alone for the next three four hours to make it work because if you peel the salt before it's dry the effect is not going to be the one that you're expecting So, how much salt? Just cover the whole back count. Now that it is dry and I take all the salt from the page, you can see very well the texture. So what we're going to do now, I'm going to grab my brown number six and a little bit of my purple from my palette And with the tip of my bristles, I'm going to add a shadow. On the bottom. I'm going to clean my brush. I will paint a few threads above each of the eggs with paints grey. I like to use first my mechanical HB pencil to be sure that the lines are straight.
that's it guys i hope you like it and have a happy painting ciao